we're going to do now before we start solving limits systematically is to list, to define properties of limits. These are really important because if you're familiar with them, you will be comfortable doing operations with limits and you know that this is mathematically rigorous. So you won't hesitate thinking that uh, maybe you're kind of breaking the mathematical laws. So you can find us in section 3.4 in the lecture notes and you should be able to refer to that whenever you're calculating a limit. If you're unsure, look at this. But basically these will cover the properties of what it is to take, for example, the, the limit of a sum of functions, the limit of a product of functions or quotients, or if you multiply by a constant. And it turns out that limits are very nicely behaved, which is awesome. And these properties, it turns out, they also feed or they propagate to the properties of derivatives, which maybe you're already using, but you didn't know that they come from limits. So let's have a look at this. Let's start with two simple properties of limits. These are the sum and the subtraction properties. You'll see why these are useful. So just like in the lecture notes, I've looked at a function f of x and another one that's g of x. And for these functions, we know that the limit when x goes to a of f of x is equal to a, and the limit when x goes to a of g of x is b. Now, your best possible hopes really are true because the limits of the sum is simply the sum of the limits. A similar thing happens for the subtraction. If you want to calculate what is the limit of the subtraction of functions, provided these limits exist and you know the values, you just have to subtract them. So this is pretty simple, but also pretty powerful. Because what it means, and let's just think about this case, what it means is that you can actually take, break apart the limit operator. Let's say you want to calculate this limit when x goes to a of f of x plus g of x. What you can do in practice, and this will come back because we're going to use it, is we can say that this is the same as the limit when x goes to a of f of x plus the limit when x goes to a of g of x. Same thing goes for the subtraction. So it means that when in maybe a few minutes, hours or days, when you're calculating complex limits that will be the sums of many functions, you can just break them apart like this. And sometimes it helps because you will know the value of these individual limits while you might not know the, what is the value when you sum them. There's two other important properties which we should cover, which have to do with when you multiply and when you divide. So let's have a look at that and try some physics one-on-one -on -one magic. So just to facilitate and to save the planet from the ink that I'm using for these videos, I am only going to change the name here. So I'm gonna call this the product property and here the quotient. Here we're looking at the limit when x goes to a of the product of these two functions and here the limit when x goes to a of the quotient of the two properties. And it, it turns out that these properties are also very simple and easy to remember because in this case this is just a times b and in this case this is just a divided by b provided that b is not zero. This is, this is an important caveat in this case. It means that just like we've seen from the sum and subtraction, for the product and quotient of functions, you can apply these very neat properties to solve them. So it means that if you're trying to solve the limit when x goes to a of f of x times g of x, 
you can simply take this apart and this is the same as the limit when x goes to a of f of x times the limit when x goes to a of g of x. So a same property will apply for the quotient and the only thing that you need to make sure is that uh, this value is not zero. I hope that you become familiar with these properties. They're very easy to, to remember. In Physics 101, we're not going to prove them. If you want to have a look at the proofs, I can recommend you uh, books. For example, Calculus by Apostol has all the proofs. Many other books have it. But in this case, it is important that at least you know the basic properties of limits so that we can use them to demonstrate uh, a lot of the properties of derivatives and also to derive rules of differentiation. Perhaps some rules that you've already been applying, but the demonstrations actually all come down to properties of, of limits.